All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the third session of the last day of GCon. Uh, very excited to have you here. We have another awesome presentation for you guys. Um, I'm joined by Jean DeWitt from Switch.co, who I'll introduce in just a bit. Um, and she's going to present on how to create a unified communications experience uh, using Google Apps. So before I uh, turn it over to Jean, there's a few things that I did want to mention. Uh, for those of you who have tuned into multiple GCon sessions, uh, you probably know how this goes. Uh, we're going to be handling uh, Q&A through the Q&A app. So in the top right corner of your Hangout on Air window, you should see a, uh, a, a small square with about nine squares inside of it that you can click on. And in there, you should see two icons, one for the Showcase app and one for the Q&A app. So if you click on the Q&A app, you can go ahead and submit your questions there and upvote the ones uh, that you like. And inside the Showcase app, we're going to prevent, uh, present a couple of things to you guys that you can uh, click on and explore further. So uh, if you stay tuned until the end of the presentation, uh, I'm gonna make a, a form available there that you can click on and fill out your information to make yourself eligible for the, uh, the new Chromebook Pixel that I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of you guys are excited about. And you can also enter to win one of our uh, awesome GCon swag boxes that we're giving out. So, uh, so like I said, stay tuned until the end of the presentation to fill out that form and make sure you're eligible. Uh, and so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Jean, who's going to go ahead and get started with her presentation. Uh, so Jean, if you wanna go ahead and take it away. Thanks a lot for the introduction, Andrew, um, and hi, everybody. I'm Jean DeWitt, the Chief Revenue Officer here at Switch Communications. Uh, and so I'm going to take you all through how you can achieve unified communications with Google Apps working together in conjunction with Switch. So I will now throw up my presentation here, and we will dive in. Uh, to get us started, sort of brief introduction about me and, and the company. So I come from a long Google heritage. I joined Switch Communications 10 months ago after 10 years at Google. Uh, so had had a sort of two careers at Google, joined right after Gmail launched and worked on the consumer side of things on Gmail, Google Talk, and Google Voice. And then had the second half of my career in the Google Apps for Work organization, um, running small and medium-sized business sales uh, around different parts of the world, so APAC as well as ultimately North and Latin America. Um, so if uh, you are a company with less than 750 employees who joined in the last four years, um, there's a good chance one of my sales reps might have spoken to you. Um, but join Switch Communications because, um, you know, I think there's a, a bit of a gap in the overall Google Apps product offering around unified communications and felt like Switch was really well positioned to fill that. So to give you a little bit of background on the company, um, some of you may have known us originally if you've been Uber conference users for a while as Firespotter Labs. So we rebranded Switch Communications this October with the launch of our second product, Switch. The company was founded in 2011 by Craig Walker. About 15 years of voice over IP experience, he ran Dialpad, which Yahoo bought to become Yahoo Voice. And then he started Grand Central, which Google bought to become Google Voice. Uh, he ran Google Voice at Google for three years and then ultimately left to start this company. Uh, he's joined by two co-founders, Brian Peterson and John Rector. Brian ran the front end of Google Voice engineering team and John Rector ran the, the telephony side of the Google Voice engineering team. So the company has a ton of Google heritage, which I think means we know how to build products that integrate really well into the Google Apps ecosystem. Um, you know, beyond that, have the tie-in through some funding via Google Ventures. Um, and in case it wasn't clear, you know, are really focused on cloud-based real-time communications with, with our product Switch and Uber conference. So kind of switching into today's topic, um, I think a big reason of why you all are here is you, you recognize that the way that we work is changing. Um, so in the last three to five years, we've really seen a, an acceleration of a number of trends. The first one being around mobility. Um, so work really used to be a place you went, physical location from nine to five, and now it's really an activity you do. So it's happening at the office, at home, at Starbucks, at an airplane at, at 30,000 feet. And given that, people need to be connected from, from anywhere on any device. The second one is around collaboration. So work used to be a lot more siloed. Individuals could work you know, by themselves or with a small working group around them. 
Whereas now people are now collaborating across borders, across companies with both customers and partners and so on and so forth. And then finally, the onset of BYOD. Um, so many of you probably have employees who are bringing their own device today and using that personal device in a work context. Um, and so technology ne hasn't necessarily always evolved to keep up with that from an I IT perspective. Um, so given all these trends, um, in most cases, I'm guessing you all, when you, you evaluated moving to Google, you probably came over to Google um, as a cloud-based business email replacement. So saw the, the huge potential of, of Gmail um, to both improve end user experience as well as likely reduce costs. And from there, hopefully, you've all moved into exploring the docs and drive world, um, you know, the, another major component of the overall productivity suite. Where we've seen less adoption in the Google Apps world is with um, the next major component of the product, which is Hangouts. Um, and this is where you really get into the unifi unified communications um, part of, of the Google Apps offering. Um, as, as good as Google Hangouts is, though, when you look at unified communications, it's not providing the entire stack of that. And so that's where the products from Switch come in. So you have Switch for your core business telephony, as well as Uber Conference for the audio side of conferencing. So let's look at the unified communication stack um, uh, holistically. So normally, when you think about unified communications, there's six major components to it. So at a basic level, you've got instant messaging and presence, things that we've had you know, back since the 90s. You have, now have SMS, video conferencing, audio conferencing. You've got your voice, so all of your you know, generally phone on desk um, are now mobile as well. And then PBX to give you your core business phone features around having an 800 number for sales or a main line where people can call your front desk, the ability to route calls between people, transfer them, have call groups and departments, et cetera. And so when we look at a lot of communications in the space, really you haven't seen the same level of shift to the cloud in the unified communication side of things as you have on the core email and productivity side. And so as a result, if I were to go and talk to many of you about your unified communication stack, I'm guessing I would see basically for instant messaging, most of you are probably using Hangouts and Gmail or Gchat, if you will, for that. SMS, you probably don't have a solution for. People are probably using their personal devices, giving out their personal cell phone number um, if they want to text each other. Maybe some of you are using Hangouts for that. Video conferencing, you know, another hodgepodge. Hopefully some of you are using Hangouts. Many are probably also using combinations of WebEx, BlueJeans, um, stuff like that. Audio conferencing is probably yet another product. So maybe some of you are still on things like Intercall and PGI that give you an 800 number with a 10-digit PIN. Other of you might be migrating more towards the online space with things like Join.me or, or WebEx, et cetera. If we move up the voice stack, you know, some of you might be using Comcast Business Voice or AT&T Business Voice. Other of you, you know, may have a telephony closet or on-premise server to do that. And some of you probably have Skype for Business that you're trying to cobble together or using Google Voice in a work context. Um, so you can see where, you know, most people that we're engaging with today, despite having this really nice experience across email and productivity, then have about 10 different tools to achieve how do I do real-time communications with folks. So let's go through now the ways that you can bring all of these things together with Hangouts, Switch, and Uber Conference. So at a high level, Hangouts is going to be your core video um, functionality. A lot of you may have looked at Hangouts in the past, but it was a little bit challenging to get into, required a Google Apps account, required you to turn on Google+. Google has fixed all these things, so it's a good time to take a second look at Hangouts as your core video um, solution, and then augmenting that with things like Uber Conference and Switch. Um, so at the end of the day, even though video has been all the rage for meetings, about 80% of um, meeting minutes are still happening audio only. So moving to a more web-oriented solution for that can give you a lot more functionality than your you know, old school, out of the 1970s, dial-in with a pin. 
And then on the voice side of things, you know, moving from either having people giving out their personal cell phone numbers or an old school system that's really oriented around ringing a desk phone into something that's now oriented around a mobile worker and enables a BYOD to have a business phone number or enables somebody um, to still have access to their phone number while away from that phone on the desk um, gets you your third component. Um, and when you bring these together with Hangouts, Uber Conference, and Switch, you also, you know, there's a reason we made it a Venn diagram because we've done a bunch of different integrations so that you're pulling the best of what Google offers into the Switch and Uber Conference experience. So Hangouts, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, you know, the key things that it does um, are IM, video calls, and presence. Uh, and I'll go into a couple of maybe the lesser known features of those that are worth checking out. Um, so diving in on IM in particular, I think most people are using that today for, you know, one-to-one -one instant messaging, but some of the things you may not be aware of are the fact that you actually can do group instant messaging as well. So instead of getting yet another app to go handle group IM, all you have to do is, you know, click on this little person icon and you can now add as many people as you want into that ad hoc group conversation. Another thing I, I love, um, personally I've been using for a long time, is, is the Gmail Lab um, that lets you turn chat to be on the right-hand side rather than the left. Um, for me, generally, better use of screen real estate so I can always see my contacts and who's online right in front of me rather than getting it pushed down the page if you've got a bunch of labels. Um, if I flip to the other side, you've got presence here, right? So this is where you can always see who's available, who's idle, who doesn't want to be disturbed. The other thing that's that's great to know about this one is that Hangouts is federated across all Google Apps users. So as Google gets more and more companies using Google Apps, um, all those companies can now automatically talk to one another as well. So if you have a customer or a partner who's also a Google Apps user, you can just add them as a contact within Hangouts and now you can also see when they're online and available. Um, so particularly with folks in, within a sales organization, great way to increase collaboration and make sure you can get those real-time questions answered with, with some of your sales contacts. Um, and then finally, diving into Hangouts. So right now, you all are getting to experience Hangouts on air, so hopefully you have some level of, of familiarity. Um, but for those who don't, Hangouts is going to be, can be your core video conferencing solution um, in mostly in a desktop way or with Chromebox for meetings in a room. So lets you have 15 video participants. If you go over to the left-hand side of your screen, you, you get this additional bar, which has a bunch of different features. So you can do integrated chat um, to be able to have side conversations throughout the, the conference. You've got screen sharing like we're doing today. Um, so you can go through presentations together. There are additional apps. So you can see the Uber Conference one highlighted, and we'll get into to that integration later. Um, and then maybe a lesser known per, per, a feature as well is the ability to dial out to participants. So if you have someone um, who you need to jo have joined but they can't be on video, you can actually just add them by, by calling them directly. The other thing that people um, don't often realize is you can set up as an admin to make um, Google Hangouts um, by default added to all of your meetings. So when I was at Google, this is something that we did. This is something we do at Switch. So that way you never get into a meeting and have people not figure out how to join. Um, so an admin can just turn that on and then every time you create a meeting, you'll get this Hangouts link so that people can join. Um, and great, great for internal, becomes relatively obvious to hop on that for meetings. Um, but externally as well, now that Google's making it easier to join, th this will share a link with folks so that they can hop on too. So once you've got kind of the core video set up, and I am with, with Hangouts, there's a lot of ways that you can extend that. Um, so one of those is with Uber Conference. Um, so the reality is for as much growth as video is seeing, as I mentioned previously, about 80% of meeting minutes are still with, um, with audio only. And a big driver of that is more of that external communication where, you know, video isn't still quite as seamless. And, and frankly, sometimes people just aren't as comfortable being on video and, and, and staring at each other um, when they don't yet know each other. Um, so this is where Uber Conference comes in uh, with audio conferencing. Um, so the, at a high level, there's two things we do here. So one is solve simplicity of just your core conference call. So if you don't want to use the web, you just want a phone number to give out. Today, you're likely giving out an 800 number with this 10-digit pin. 
what we've done, and that's a, a remnant of the past when phone numbers were super expensive, and so conference calling companies wanted to be able to re renew, uh, reuse them, um, which is irrelevant today with, with phone numbers being almost free. Um, so what we do instead is number, which you can think of as your own personal meeting room. Um, so if you give out that phone number, I'm in San Francisco, so I have a 415 number. Um, now, anytime anybody calls that number, they just automatically get dropped into the conference, just like you would get into a meeting, a physical meeting room, if you open the door and walked in. So make it makes it much simpler for folks to join. Then on top of that, you have the online meetings portion. So you see that here um, on screen. You can also join via the web. So everybody gets their own dedicated conferencing URL, so uberconference.com slash gene, which again, you can just give out and people automatically join. No need to sign up, create accounts, anything like that. The benefits there then are you also get HD audio quality. So you're using uh, WebRTC, um, which has the Opus codec. So you get really high quality, actually better than you would over mobile or, or the PSTN landline network. You also get a bunch of different functionality, um, you know, around being able to see who's actually on the call. So a huge challenge you have with conference calls today is the fact that, um, you know, you're often having to say, oh, okay, this is Jean. Wait, who just joined the call? Um, you know, kind of constantly announce yourself. So instead now from an online meeting perspective, you can see exactly who is on the call. And then if any one of these people started talking, there'd be an active speaker icon. So you now know, hey, Craig is the one that's talking, you know, not Alexander. Um, on top of that, you can then bring in a ton of uh, additional features that you wouldn't have previously had. Um, so you've got integrated chat, just like Hangouts. If I were to mouse over any of these people, you can actually click on an icon to bring up a social profile. So often when you're on a conference call, you may not know the people particularly well. And so clicking on that social profile pulls up their LinkedIn, so you can see their title, you can see mutual connections, pulls up Twitter, pulls up Google+, Plus, so you can see what they've been talking about, what's top of mind. So from a sales and customer-facing perspective, provides a huge amount of, of context for that meeting. Um, and then on top of that, you've got a bunch of integrations specifically um, around Google um, to, to make that experience more seamless. So going into some of those specifically, um, one, you can sign in with your Google account, so you don't have to create yet another account. Um, also do similar to Hangouts, both screen sharing, but also file sharing. So if you want to share an actual file so that everybody on the call can manipulate it, you can pull in docs directly from Google Drive. You can also do that from other file sharing um, solutions if you use those. Um, and even share something for, directly from your computer. And then people can collaborate that on that um, at real, in real time. Um, also have integration with Google Calendar so that you can add all of your conference info with the click of a button. Um, and then um, have uh, and then the integration directly into Hangouts, um, which I will show momentarily. Um, so Uber Conference from Hangouts is sort of the perfect marriage uh, of both worlds. Um, so again, the things that are great about Hangouts is, is that high quality video. But the challenge is you're capped at 15 participants and you also can't have anybody dial in if they're on the road. So with adding the Uber Conference app, so you can see that over here on the left, that launches this Uber Conference panel here on the right. And now you can have an additional 100 callers on that Hangout. So you'll have 15 on video and then 100 on voice. And you still get all the same features of Uber Conference. So you can see exactly who's on the call. If Craig started speaking, you'd see the active speaker. Um, and there goes my calendar notification. Um, and, and then get all the same features around adding participants, recording, locking the call, et cetera. Um, on top of that, one of the, the benefits is this ability to have a phone number now attached to a Hangout so that people can just dial into that. So the reality is not all of us are always in a situation where video is convenient. Maybe we're at the airport, we're in a car, we're working from our bed that day. <laughs> Um, so with a dial-in, you now can offer those two options for every single meeting and have folks join via the video if that's appropriate or just call in um, if, if, if it's not. Here's a quick demonstration of the calendar plugin. So you can see just like you normally would have your Hangouts um, uh, link, you now can have one that's Hangouts plus Uber Conference. So when you launch a Hangout, 
Uber conference will auto automatically be loaded into that with all of the meeting information um, and bad transition on my behalf. But um, so that so that gives you a sense for all the stuff um, from an from an audio perspective. Um, so switching gears, uh, the, the, the last part of unified communication is all around voice. Um, so in today's world, you probably fall into two camps. So one, you do have a voice solution. Um, so everybody at your company is getting a business phone number, but that's likely oriented around putting a phone on their desk, um, which realistically most people aren't working from their desk all day, all day long these days. On the alternative side of things, maybe you've, you've said, hey, you know, the desk phone is not that useful, so I'm just not going to give people a phone number and let them use do BYOD. Um, so the challenge in that environment is you've now relinquished control of your calls. So if somebody's giving out their personal cell phone number and you decide to fire them and perhaps they were on your sales team, all your customers continue to call that individual rather than calling that phone number which you own, which now routes to another rep. Um, so this is where Switch comes in. So Switch was launched in beta in October, um, came out of beta in January, um, and rapidly growing, focused specifically on the Google Apps market. And we're here to bring a voice to Google Apps. Um, so basically, you can almost think of it's Google Voice for business. Um, so a lot of the same functionality if you're familiar with Google Voice, but in a business context rather than consumer. Um, and then layer on all the company level features that you need around department lines, being able to call a main line, having, you know, an, an IVR where you can press one for support, two for sales, et cetera. Um, so let's go through some of the, the key things here that, that switch, switch solves in, in a voice perspective. Um, and so at a high level, those are the fact that it's built around this mobile worker You've got the integration with Google to make that feel seamless. You now have a bunch of additional features that have been hidden behind this desk phone that none of us really know how to use. And then similar to how Google made Google Apps very easy to manage with the control panel, you have that same web-based management um, for Switch. So um, diving into mobility. Um, at a high level, Switch um, has a, a number of ways to connect. So the first is um, it the switches it has a Chrome app for the desktop. Um, so this is essentially a soft phone. So you install the Chrome app, and that's going to mean it's going to work across Mac, um, PC, Chromebooks, Linux, um, and that that will then sit on your desktop. So you don't have to be actively using Chrome. All that's required is that Chrome be installed. Um, and then Switch can, you know, run in the background. And even if you don't have Switch running, if you get an incoming call, it'll just pop to the fore foreground. Um, so this lets you send and receive calls via your computer. The other thing we then have are apps for iOS and Android. So when you put one of these applications on your phone, let's say that's a personal device, you now can send and receive business phone calls from a business number on your personal device. Um, so this lets you both, if you place calls directly from the app, that's obviously going to go out via your switch number. But even if you place them from the native dialer on Android, not on iOS, um, we actually can prompt you, hey, do you want to use your personal phone number or do you want to use um, your switch one? Um, and then we're working on tablet apps as well. And then what's not illustrated here is if you still do want a desk phone, we can also make that ring and do everything you'd expect a desk phone to do. So, and so you see that here. So ultimately then what this means is we can ring all of your devices at the same time. So one of the challenges in today's world, if I wanna call someone in a business context, I generally have to think about, are they at their desk right now? Okay, great, maybe I'll look them up and use their business phone number. Or do I think they're on the go? Then hopefully I know their personal cell phone number and I can give them a call on their mobile phone. Um, instead, with Switch, that one number is going to ring your desktop, it's going to ring your mobile phone, and it's going to ring your desk phone. And wherever you happen to be, you can answer the phone on that device. On top of that, you can then switch calls seamlessly between devices. So let's say you're coming into work, you're running a little bit late, so you take a call on your mobile phone. You now get to your desk. You don't necessarily want to be sitting at your desk continuing to hold your mobile phone to the, your ear. 
So in that case, you have a little bit of UI on the Chrome app that would say switch call to this device, which you can click on and immediately that call transparently flips over to your desktop. So you can now plug in your head headset and keep chatting um, and vice versa. If I had the call here, you'd have UI on your cell phone that says switch call to this device and now I can get up and walk away from my desk. Next is Google Apps integration. So we wanted to make sure that this was as seamless uh, uh, an integration with Google as possible. So the things that we do there first are have single sign-on through your Google Apps credentials. So using OAuth2, you can use the same username and password to get into Switch. So you don't have to create yet another account. On top of that, we can then, if we know you're the admin, go and, and pull in all of your Google Apps users to switch so you don't have to recreate them, you just have to assign them numbers. Um, and then what this gives you is an instant company directory. So that's been something that Google necessarily has, hasn't necessarily done as seamlessly, but today, if most of you wanna call somebody at your company, most likely you're probably going to your company's intranet, looking them up, trying to find their phone number and then going back to your phone and punching that in. Um, or similarly, if you need their cell phone number, you're having to probably go ask them in person, put that into your personal cell phone number and then you know call that at a later point. Whereas with Switch, anyone that you've created a Switch account for is automatically going to be callable. So if you've got 40,000 people at your company, they'll be loaded into the app and you can just search for any of them by name and now with, with a click or a touch of, of a button, you can call them. And then lastly, we have Drive, Calendar, and Gmail integrations. So getting into those more specifically, um, similar to Uber Conference, we, we think there's a lot of contact text that's important on a call. Um, so here, what you can see is this, I would be on a call here with Stefan. If I clicked on conversation, that's where you'd see the active call or where we'd be SMSing or IMing one another. But while I'm on that call with him, I can click profile. And then what we do is we pull in the three most recent Gmail messages that we've shared, three more most recent Google Docs we've worked on together, upcoming calendar invites with them, as well as publicly available social information. So that same LinkedIn integration um, and Twitter. And then we're look, working on a bunch of other integrations there that would be relevant. Um, so again, when most of us are on a call, we're not just, you know, chatting for fun, we're chatting about something and likely these things that we would automatically pull in are some of the things you'd been, be chatting about. The other thing you can do too is we've got the Hangouts icon here. So if I'm on this phone call with Stefan and decide, you know what, this would be better, um, you know, in a face-to-face -face meeting, you can just click that icon, launch as a Hangout, both of you are immediately dropped into that and so you can escalate to a video call. Third is call controls. Um, so PBX provides about 200 different features from blocking calls to transferring calls to doing three-way calls, et cetera. The reality is most of us only know how to answer a call and hang up the phone because it's just so complicated. Um, so this is where Switch makes things super simple. Um, so the, the desktop app and the mobile app um, look really similar. Um, so when you're on an active call, you get all of these call controls. And now you can mute, you can put on hold, you can transfer, you can do a three-way call all at the click of a button rather than having to um, memorize various multi-digit codes. To give you an example of one, here's transfer. So in today's world, it, let's say you're a salesperson, you get an inbound call, and really it's a support question, so you need to transfer it to the support organization. Most likely that salesperson would say, okay, I'm gonna to try to transfer you right now. If I accidentally hang up on you, you know, here's the direct line so you can call back. And then you press flash, you dial some number, you maybe press flash again and you pray. Um, whereas in the switch environment now, it's as simple as clicking transfer, typing in the name of the person you want, pulls up a bunch of people that you can click on, and then you just confirm that that's who you wanted and that call is gone. Um, same experience for three-way calling, et cetera. The other thing that's interesting here is I could actually be on my desk phone or be on my cell phone and the apps are all aware of each other so I can control the call from my desktop um, even though I'm not maybe actively taking the call there. Here's the example of the ability to switch calls between devices. So in this case, I've got an active call on the desktop. You can see all the call controls. If I go into the mobile app for on my phone, 
my phone will be aware of the fact that I have an active call and I'll get this button to switch call to this device and then immediately that call will be on my cell phone. Finally is management. Um, managing a phone system is probably one of the more painful technology things to do. If you've got PBX, you're still writing lines of code in your PBX server, which basically takes a PhD. On the other side of things, you probably often have to call your phone company if you wanna add another line. Um, so with Switch, you get that same easy management that you have with the, the control panel for Google Apps. So as mentioned previously, you can import your users directly from Google Apps, and then you can add folks with the click of a button. You can go in and create departments for sales, support, accounts payable, et cetera. You can assign admin privileges. So let's say you have a sales department. Instead of having IT have to make updates every time they wanna change the IVR, you could make the head of sales ops or the VP of sales, the admin on just that department. Um, and then you can obviously port existing numbers. So, you know, if you have an existing phone system, you like all your phone numbers, you can easily move those over to us. Going more into more depth um, with the company level features. So here's an example um, of call handling for a department. So let's say I have that sales department. We've got an 800 number posted on our website. When that comes in, I can choose to have that routed to live operators and then that'll ring folks on my sales team or go to an automated system. And then setting up that automated system is as easy as just picking drop downs. So I can forward it to a department, to a person, do dial by name directory, leave a voicemail. And again, those are just drop downs. So anybody can set this up in a matter of five minutes. On top of that, you can do custom greetings, custom hold music, have business hours. So from nine to five, you do ring your salespeople. Outside of that, you go to a voicemail, et cetera. And then lastly, um, again, similar to the Google Apps model of used to be super opaque pricing models, you know, 10 different SKUs you had to decide from. And Google took that to the simple $5 per user per month. We've done the same thing with Switch. So um, $15 per user per month gets you unlimited domestic, which is US and Canada, inbound and outbound calls, so no permanent fees. You also get unlimited domestic texts, so most people you know, don't have SMS in a work environment right now, so you get that. And then you have very low international outbound rates. Inbound is obviously free as well. Um, so with that, um, I, that's kind of the broad overview of how with Hangouts plus Switch and Uber Conference, you can get to a unified communications environment. So I will end there and hop into um, Q&A. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Gene. Um, so yeah, we're going to move over to the Q&A app for right now. Uh, and before we do, I, I just wanted to let everybody know that the, uh, the form that I referenced at the beginning of the presentation is uh, now available in the Showcase app. So uh, as Gene is taking a second to answer some questions, you can go in there and uh, click on the link in the showcase app, fill out the form really fast, and then come on back and uh, listen to Gene answer some of these great questions that we have because we do have a, uh, a ton of questions, which uh, hopefully we can try and get to all of these. Um, I'm not sure, Gene, are you, are you scanning yes. these right now? All right, I'm, so if I'm you want to just grab one and go ahead. Um, Perfect. Answer some. All right, so I will start with Lindsay. So is this something that can work with slash replace Shortel and Cisco phones at employees' desks? Um, oh man, they move around. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I told okay. you, I warned you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the answer to that is definitely yes. Um, so um, Switch is absolutely a Shortel and Cisco replacement. It's, it's less so something that would work with them. So this would, you would rip it out instead. Um, so as mentioned previously, um, you know, Switch is really oriented around that desktop and mobile experience. That being said, you know, there are a lot of use cases where a desk phone is still really relevant. Um, so if you also want to keep a desk phone, um, there's two different things that we do. So one is if you have um, existing desk phones, depending on that phone, we can do things like give out our SIP credentials to enable you to hook into Switch and make that phone ring. The other thing we do is we actually have a great partnership with Obi High. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, they make an IP phone. Um, and this company, the founders of it, um, are twice have been twice acquired by Cisco. They're now on their third company, so know what they're doing. Um, and with that, it has the Switch firmware on it. 
So when you go to provision a phone, it literally takes 10 seconds. Um, you don't have these clunky, you know, UIs that you have to go to to provision a Cisco phone and put in some credentials and all that type of stuff. You literally would just go plug it into the internet, um, you know, type in an activation code that's five digits and that phone is now set up and running. Um, and then it gets the, the switch integration of being able to see folk, somebody's picture when they call in, having your directory on the phone, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so yes, definitely Shortel and Cisco replacement. Okay, so Gregory, how does this work for connecting people who aren't part of your domain? For example, having unrelated third parties join meetings. Okay, so that sounds like it's um, in reference to Uber Conference. So for Uber Conference, um, that works seamlessly. So there's no requirement that somebody be on Google Apps or be on Uber Conference in order to be able to join it. You don't need any sort of account for Uber Conference. So if you're um, connecting with somebody outside your domain, when you send the calendar invite, um, there's a, a, an Uber Conference plugin. So you can literally click the Uber Conference plugin while you're scheduling that meeting. It'll drop the details into the calendar description area, um, and it's going to send one the dial-in number, so your dedicated phone number, and then two your Uber Conference URL. Um, and so people then have those options: do they want to pick up their desk phone and call your your phone number, um, your your Uber Conference number? They'll get dropped right in. If they want to use the online meetings, all they have to do is go to that uh, URL, and they're instantly in the meeting. Okay, John. I have significant experience with Ring Central. Can you talk about where you differentiate the, from them? So from, for Ring Central, I think there are a number of differentiation points. Um, the ones that I would highlight um, are around simplicity and ease of use, pricing, um, and then mo mobility. Um, so starting with simplicity and ease of use, um, I think from a design perspective, that's something we really focused on in Switch. Um, from a setup perspective, as an example, you can go from being on our website, having never done anything, to having your account fully set up. Um, this is probably in a slightly more SMB context, um, but in we've timed it in less than a minute. <laughs> um, whereas with with Ring Central, generally they try to get you to take a call to do an hour long walkthrough just to explain that. Um, so a lot of attention to detail around the setup, the customization, all the inter interface for, um, for an IT manager, the person who's handling that. Um, uh, and then similarly, kind of, I would say more attention to detail on the end user experience um, around simplicity and, and ease of use um, and, and sort of the general uh, visual appeal of apps. Um, second is around pricing. Um, so generally, um, you know, they've got sort of your, your typical basic advanced enterprise SKUs. Um, and, you know, as you become a bigger company and scale, you, you have to move into a bigger SKU. Um, and there's more kind of things that you would pay for in addition. Whereas um, Switch is $15 per user per month, all inclusive, no, nothing hidden, anything like that. That's another thing that's really typical with a lot of our competitors. Um, we like to think of ourselves as sort of the good guys um, of telephony, um, so not none of these hidden fees um, that often actually take up your 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 total bill significantly. Um, so generally, we're going to come in a lot less expensive than than Ring Central. And then lastly, is around mobility. Ring Central has definitely been investing in this space, um, developing mobile app, apps, etc. Um, I think the difference here is that Switch um, was really designed from the get-go around mobility, and so you have a, a seamless experience across mobile and web um, rather than something that's sort of been bolted on, um, and it continues to be very front and center for us. Um, so the roadmap that we have planned for mobile is incredibly robust, um, and that will be continue to be a, a huge emphasis for us. Okay, Michael. How can you or the IT department determine if you have enough bandwidth to support audio, video, and each of these services? Um, so great question. Um, also, it would probably be great to have you chat with my sales engineer who can give you a far better answer. Um, we do have suggested um, bandwidth amounts. Um, this also probably depends a little bit on the size of company that you are. Um, so most people who set up their network, um, if you have a more complicated network to work with Google Apps, are going to be pretty fine for Switch. 
Um, so there's some tweaks that we make, um, but generally you should be good. The big thing is, is mostly around voice packet prioritization. So if you have routers that can uh, prioritize voice packets, that's what you're going to want to do just so if somebody's streaming a YouTube video, you don't want that crushing somebody's phone call. Um, so that's, that's the major one. Um, but beyond that, we can sit down with you, kind of evaluate, you know, how many users you have, kind of your expectations around concurrent calls. Um, and in most cases so far, we haven't found people needed to add bandwidth. John says, a longer trial period would be really nice. A few days, not enough to really test. Um, we totally appreciate the feedback. Um, you're more than welcome to get in touch with our, our sales team, and we can always extend that for you. Um, so uh, you can email me or just email sales at switch.co, and we'll get back to you right away. <laughs> From Richard, do you support call recording for training and quality control? Um, so yes, we have call recording in both Uber Conference and in Switch. Um, so in Uber conference in the bottom right, there's a record button. If you press that, it's going to play an IVR to everybody on the call. So legally you're good. You know, it says this call is being recorded. It changes part of the visual UI, um, to show that it's being recorded. And then at the end of that meeting, we automatically send a call summary to the organizer, which will have a link to that recording. Um, and that link is, is hosted online. So you can just forward the URL to anybody. Um, I should also note that that is included um, in the Uber conference price, so people are used to having to pay for recordings in an audio conferencing world. That's just part of the deal. Um, on Switch, similarly, um, on any call where I kind of showed you those call controls, right above that, there's a little record button. That's also going to play an IVR to both sides so they know it's being recorded. Um, and then that gets um, saved in the, the, the various apps um, for the person who recorded the call. Okay, Timothy, non-for-profit or CFT, F, CTF pricing? Um, so we don't have that currently. Um, we do have a lot of non-profits uh, using both Uber Conference and Switch. Um, so it's something, you know, we're, we're considering for the future. I think right now uh, we're a startup, so also trying to make money. Um, but uh, most nonprofits have found that relative to any other solution out there, we're, we're pretty inexpensive. Um, so actually, it's been one of our, our best verticals to date. Um, uh, so that's where we are right now. Um, okay, Michael. My company has offices in the U.S., Europe, and India. What services are available for Europe and India, and what are the incremental costs? Um, so right now, and this is only because we're three months post initial public launch, um, switches for um, US, US based employees, um, so US phone numbers, etc. Um, we actually do have global capabilities in 50 countries, um, but it's a matter of, of doing the engineering work to productize that. So if you came, you know, and signed up, um, you uh, could go and provision in, in a number in India or a number in Europe, et cetera. Um, so, um, so that is definitely coming um, for, for large deployments. We actually are able to do that on a one-off basis right now. Um, so sort of when you get into the above 1,000 users, um, below that, it, because it's so manual, we can't support it yet. Um, so, but that is 100%, you know, the game plan. Um, the incremental costs, um, it is uh, the, the, the user license. Um, we haven't finalized pricing, but given that um, mobile costs and phone number costs are more expensive outside the United States, um, it will be slightly more than $15, um, but everything else will be the same. So let's say you had somebody in France, you would get all calls within France, um, you know, are included in that price as well as all calls back to the U.S. and Canada. Um, so, um, so anyway, definitely connect with us about that from a sales perspective. And, you know, if we can solve it now, awesome. And then um, worst case scenario, we'll, we'll keep you on our list and let you know once we're fully internationally enabled. Okay, uh, Dave, is the $15 per user per month for just the switch code portion or is Uber Conference included in that? So the $15 per user per month is just for Switch. Um, we are definitely working on integrating Uber Conference into Switch. Um, and so um, there'll be updates around that in the future. Um, we think there's a lot of opportunity for those two products to play together. 
Um, but for now, it is $15 per user per month for Switch. And then Uber Conference, we have a free version um, and then a paid version. The paid version lets you have unlimited minutes, up to 100 callers, um, all of the international dial-ins, the ability to dial out to participate participants when a meeting starts and a number of other features and that one's ten dollars per user per month. Colin's question, will Uber conference be able to be integrated into Chromebox for meetings units? So there's a single URL to click to join a meeting via video and audio. Colin, we would love to do this. Uh, so Google just hasn't released the APIs for Chromebox for meetings to support apps yet. Uh, the minute they do, we will be in there. Um, I think we were one of the very first apps to be integrated into Hangouts, um, and we get this feedback all the time from Chromebox for Meetings users, um, so we can't wait until we can support it. <laughs> okay, Rick's question. What would happen if your company experienced an internet outage? How does it handle that? Um, so the great thing about how um, Switch is set up is because we have the mobile connectivity, if you have an internet outage, your mobile phone is still gonna be able to ring. Um, so today, the, the mobile apps actually use your un, underlying um, carrier. Um, so when we place a call, we're actually placing that through um, your, your mobile minutes, if you will, not, um, not the internet. Um, so similarly, if there's an internet outage, your Chrome app's not gonna ring. Um, but your mobile app is it will because that's not actually a voice over IP call. Um, so you're you're still you still got one endpoint that's going to work. Dan, can this solution be used in a call center environment? Are there companies using this for call centers? So the answer to that is it depends. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do from a call center perspective. Um, so. At the core, we are a business phone system meant for sort of the individual employees um, rather than specific call center stuff. That being said, my sales team runs entirely on switch. Um, so we have departments. So as an example, if you have a sales department, um, you can set, up, set that up, have it have an 800 number, multiple 800 numbers, local numbers, anything like that, and then have that you know, either go to an automated menu where you can say press one for this, press two for that, et cetera, or have it directly ring people who are in that department. Um, you know, right now we um, don't um, have advanced features. If you're familiar around like automatic call distribution or call queuing, those are definitely some things that we're looking at. Um, so if you have, you know, a, a small team that is looking for relatively simple call center functionality, um, we use it for that internally. We have a bunch of customers using it that way. Um, but if you're talking, you know, massive call centers, sophisticated CRM integration, you know, sophisticated call routing scenarios, that's not where we are currently. Okay, da oh, just moved. Um, so David, um, is the $15 per extension the only fee? Yes. So. So, well, let me be clear. So the $15 is the um, per user price. So on a per user basis, the only thing additional that you would have is if they made outbound calls um, internationally. Um, and so for those, what you'll do is um, online, you can set up a calling credit that you just debit from. Um, and then when you get to the bottom of that, it can automatically um, re-up. Um, and then, or if you're a larger customer and you're invoicing, then we'll post pay bill you for that. Um, so on a per user basis, those are your fees, the $15 per user per month, and then your international, um, outbound per minute credits. Um, the other things you can then do is, um, included in switch is your company main line. If you want to purchase additional uh, department numbers, um, those are $5 a month. Um, and then the toll-free ones, those also have two cents a minute on inbound. Timothy's question, 911 or emergency response control. Yes, we have that integrated. So as part of the onboarding flow, uh, you will uh, give us your uh, location for E911. We verify that location. Um, that then becomes um, the employee's locations. When they set up their account, they are prompted um, to update that if they are not actually at that location. Um, and then that automatically um, dials the, the correct PSAP um, to route the call. For our mobile, we actually 
just use your underlying, um, that call will go through your mobile phone basically and the normal mobile 911 experience. Um, so we're fully E911 compliant. When uh, Rick's question, when people call in using a landline, is it long distance for them? Um, so I assume this is a, in reference to Uber conference. Um, and so for Uber conference, if you have the paid version of it, for 50 countries, we have a local dial-in number. Um, so what you would do is normally, if I'm having a conference just with folks in the US, I give out my 415 phone number, everybody calls it, it's lovely. Um, then if internationally, let's say I have somebody from the UK joining, I would share with them the UK local dial-in. So now that's gonna be a free local call for them. And then they call that, and then they now use my US number as a pin um, to connect that call. So, um, so won't, won't be charged for them. The other thing they can do is if you join the conference via the Uber conference URL, then that's a voice over IP call, which is going to be free no matter where you are in the world. Um, so we obviously always encourage people to use the URL, um, both because it's free no matter where you are and also because you get a bunch of additional functionality. Um, but obviously you've got the, the phone numbers if people are used to that. Romeo, when will Canadian companies be able to use Switch? Um, don't have a specific date, definitely in the plans, um, as you're hopefully aware, uh, Uber Conference is available in Canada, um, so you can get Canadian numbers for Uber Conference. Um, given that we have that, it obviously demonstrates that we can pull this off for Switch, um, just don't have a specific launch date yet, um, but definitely get in touch with us um, so we can make sure we let you know as soon as we do. Okay, Michael, what is the name of the SIP phone that Gene recommended, the one that was bought twice by Cisco? Um, so this is, it's by Obihi. Um, if, if you are a current Switch user, I want to make sure people know that you want to buy those through us. Um, you can buy them on Amazon, they're cheaper from us. Um, but if you get them on Amazon, they're not loaded with the Switch firmware. Um, so you need to get that from Switch, then it has the Switch firmware, which makes it provisionable via switch with all the switch features. Um, so you can get those at switch.co slash obihi. Um, go check that out um, and learn more. Rick's question, is there educational discounts? We don't currently have educational pricing. Um, we are obviously really interested in understanding the educational market better given Google's success there. Um, so right now we're, we're you know, looking for um, educational institutions that think switch could be compelling um so you know would love to chat learn about the, the uh, educational needs and and go from there it would be great if switch integrated with existing voip systems via something like sip so this is donovan's question donovan i'm gonna follow up with me on this one because i'm gonna need to understand a little bit more about what you're asking here um we do support sip um, that's one of the protocols we're built on. Um, so I think we just need to understand what you're trying to pull off. <laughs> Richard, can switch integrate with any CRM packages at present, at present, e.g. for customer activity reporting logging? At present, no, um, but this is a well understood um, feature um, that we think would be very compelling. Um, so uh, I don't think you'll have to hold your breath forever. <laughs> Lon, what is the smallest number of persons allowed? Would a single person business be able to make use of most of the features? Um, so yeah, you can, uh, it's a one person business, go for it, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think, um, you, I mean, you can certainly use 100% of the features. Um, so at the end of the day, if you want a business phone number, um, you know, that gives you a mobile app that you can kind of put on your own personal device. Um, absolutely, we have one, lots of one person companies on Switch today. Gene, I, I, I hate to do this, but I think we are just about running out of time. Uh, I know, thankfully, we got a chance to get to a ton of great questions. Um, and it does seem like there are a few more. Uh, I'm not sure, Gene, if you would, would you be interested in, in following up with, the, up with some of these people that didn't get a chance to have their questions answered? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if there's a way to send these to me, but if not, um, everybody, my email address is just gene, J-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at switch.co. Um, so feel free to email me, um, and mm -hmm. either I or one somebody from my team will, will get you answers. Perfect. Yeah, so unfortunately, there isn't a way to export these. So 
Um, yeah, so anybody that, that has more questions or didn't get a chance to have them answered here, uh, please reach out to Gene, uh, Gene at switch.co. Did, did I get that right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, reach out to her there uh, with any questions that you might have. And uh, like I said, it, it's about time for us, us to wrap up this session. Um, we do have actually another session starting in about three minutes, so I need to make my way over there. Um, but I, I did want to thank uh, Gene very much for stopping by and giving us that awesome presentation on creating a uh, unified communications experience in Google Apps. So uh, thank you very much, Gene. Um, really appreciate you stopping by. Awesome. And thanks, everybody, for attending. Hopefully, I get to talk to some of you. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, and if you guys have some more time, come on over to our next session uh, with the Google Apps support team. And they're gonna be discussing how uh, Google Apps support has actually gone Google. Um, so with that, I'm gonna sign off for right now and I'll see uh, hopefully most of you in a couple of minutes. Thanks.